Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have another example of a JE Advanced test question that was used in the past, and it's in particular about nuclear physics. And here we're going to try to determine the difference between fission and fusion kind of indirectly by doing the following. On the left side we have four statements, nuclear fusion, fission in a nuclear reactor, beta decay, and alpha ray emission. On the right side we have five statements, absorption of thermal neutrons by uranium-235, uh, cobalt nucleus, cobalt-60 nucleus, the energy production in stars via hydrogen conversion to helium, heavy water, and neutrino emission. And we're supposed to pair them up. Now it's possible that any one of these five is, is appropriate for any one of these four in any sort of combination. Which of these statements are appropriate for which of these statements right here? So, let's read them one at a time and see what we can determine. First of all, nuclear fusion, that's where we fuse small elements, well no, nuclear fusion, yeah, that's where we take small elements and we fuse them together into heavy elements. Hmm. Is it absorption of thermal neutrons by uranium-235? No, that causes uranium-235 to fission, not fusion, so therefore A is not appropriate, or P is not appropriate for A. How about cobalt nucleus. We cannot fuse cobalt-60 into heavy elements. That requires, well, a supernova explosion. So that's something we don't see typically in any sort of uh, nuclear reaction. How about energy production in stars via hydrogen conversion to helium? Now that's fusion. We're fusing hydrogen into helium, which means that A, well R, is an appropriate statement for A. How about heavy water? Heavy water is a moderator used in uh, production of nuclear power, electricity because of nuclear power, via fission, not fusion. So this does not belong to A. How about neutrino emission? Well, we know that the sun, uh, the sun creates neutrinos in the reaction, in the conversion from hydrogen to helium. So T would also be appropriate for nuclear fusion, especially when it deals to nuclear fusion in stars. So we can say that R and T both are appropriate statements for A. How about B, fission in a nuclear reactor? Well, absorption of thermal neutrons by uranium-235 is something we do do in nuclear reactors, so P is an appropriate statement for B. How about cobalt nucleus? Well, cobalt nucleus is something that will decay from cobalt-60 to cobalt-59, and so, or no, not from cobalt-59, it's going to change to the next heavy element after cobalt, so that is not appropriate for um, nuclear reactors. Energy production in stars is also not associated with nuclear reactors. We wish we could do the same because that would be very cheap and plentiful energy, but we're not there yet. Heavy water is a moderator used in nuclear reactors, so therefore S is an appropriate statement for fission in, uh, in a nuclear reactor. And neutrino, neutrino emission is not accomplished in nuclear reactors, so that does not belong there. How about beta decay? Well, the only thing that I've seen so far in there that is associated with beta decay is the cobalt nucleus beta decay, so Q would be appropriate for that. Now here, neutrino emission is also a potential result of beta decay. So we could also include this, now that's something most of us probably don't know or don't think about, and that's something you either know or you don't know. So again, neutrino emission uh, is possible under beta decay. And finally, gamma ray emission. Now, gamma rays are not very common production of something. Uh, let's see here. Could we have gamma ray emission from the absorption of thermal neutrons by uranium-235? The answer is yes. It definitely could be absorption of thermal neutrons. Um, although we don't typically associate gamma ray emission by that, it's much more likely to assume that this happens in the energy production in stars via hydrogen conversion to helium. That's where an enormous amount of energy is converted to uh, when we go from hydrogen to helium in the fusion reaction, and so therefore I would say that R is probably the only correct statement there associated with gamma ray emission. Neutrino emission, I would say no. Heavy water, no. Carbon uh, cobalt nucleus, I'd say no. And typically it's not something we associate with nuclear reactors, 
using uh, fission instead of fusion. So I'd say that R is probably the only possible answer that we have for uh, this from this particular set when it comes to uh, gamma ray emissions. And so those are the answers. Again, in this particular case, it's simply, do you remember this? Have you seen it before? Can you make the association? Um, it's more or less, have you memorized these facts? It's not something you can calculate or figure out numerically. It's simply, do you remember reading about this and do you remember it that you uh, were you able to uh, fasten that into your brain, so to speak? And that is how this one is done. Don't you be doing problems, not problems at the, in this configuration or as growing up in Taiwan where you draw lines to the ones that you match? Right. Yeah, actually that's used like in English classes sometimes and you know, there's, they use these kind of techniques a lot. It's not so much seen in physics, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> this is actually, we do it in all kind of stuff when I was growing oh, up. Oh, really? Yeah, you, you just draw lines to the ones that matter. Yeah, I remember doing that too. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, this is something that I would normally not expect to see here. All right.